Hope Lee KM4IPF is part of the fabulous Lee family. And uh, hopefully you will be able to uh, reach the mic. <laughs> uh, oh, excellent. OK. Uh, come on up, sweetheart. Nine years old. And uh, we've been at a couple of conventions together. And uh, she wows the audience for so many obvious reasons. Um, and your younger sister just got her license, correct? So that's all four of them now, four youngsters, all licensed and all terrific and uh, certainly uh, well able to do these presentations for me. So uh, she's very much involved with satellite communications. Uh, and your topic is talking through the birds. OK, a young lady, a young ham, and a young presenter here at uh, Hamvention Youth Forum. Hi, my name is Hope, and my call sign is KM4IPF. When I was eight years old, I got my technician in March 2015. When I was nine years old, I upgraded to my general class in December 2015. That picture is of me after I got my general. <laughs> What's really cool is now all of my family are hands including my little sister, Grace, came for Tango X-Ray Tango, who got her license on Monday. Since we, home, since we homeschool, Mommy and Daddy decided to make ham radio part of homeschooling. So after studying for two weeks, I took my test on a Friday. The next Wednesday, Richard Siff, W4BUE, let us, well, us, but mainly my brother and sister, to talk on a satellite, but there is a surprise in store. My license was in the database. Watch the video to see what happened. K4YL from Kilo Mike 4. Kilo Mike 4, India Papa Foxtrot. Fox Mike 1 6, Fox Mike 1 6. My name is Hope. Hotel Oscar Papa Echo. Your signal report is 5 Mark. You are my first QSO. I am 8 years old. I got my call sign today. Over. Congratulations, Congratulations. So as you can see, my first QSO was Talking Through the Birds, My Adventures with Ham Radio Satellites. Ham Radio Satellites orbit the Earth. One of their orbits is LEO, or Low Earth Orbit. There are two kinds of LEO orbiting satellites, linear satellites and FM satellites. Linear satellites, you can use single sideband or CW. Lots of QSOs can happen at a time. This is because the transponder has a wide bandwidth. My first QSO was on FO29. That is a linear bird. FM satellites act like a repeater in space, and only one QSO can happen at a time. This is because just like a repeater, only one or the strongest signal is heard. The one signal that is strongest is heard, the other ones are not. Later I'm going to talk more about FM satellites. LEO satellites orbit about 400 miles up, and their orbits take about 90 to 100 minutes. The Earth rotates, well, you can see in the video, that video to help show, the satellite spins around the Earth the same place, or the same path through space. However, the Earth rotates under the orbit of the satellite, so it can be at different angles on different passes. I usually talk on SO50 and AO85 because they are so easy that even a little kid can work them. During field day, we tried SO50. However, Daddy put in the wrong uplink, so we had... <laughs> Don't worry, Daddy said I could say that. <laughs> So you have to make every you have to make sure everything is programmed in right. It doesn't cost a lot of money for the equipment either. Jerry Buxton N0JY from AMSAT 
used my picture for his NASA briefing about Fox 1A, AO85. He thought it was really cool that a little kid can work the satellites. Of course you need your antenna. You can make your own or you can buy one. You need one or two VHF, UHF handheld radios. You need full duplex so that you can hear the radio while you transmit. Oh, not hear the radio, hear the downlink while you transmit. You need an app to predict the satellite passes and a compass. As you can see in the picture, I'm using my compass to find where the satellite will be. I use an aero satellite antenna, two Yaesu FT60R radios, I use a Heil headset, my daddy's iPhone, and I have a compass, and I have different methods to hold my antenna. That's me at the beach with the radio strapped to the bathing suit and the antenna. <laughs> Some of the methods I use to hold my antenna are my daddy's work tripod, PVC pipe holder, stick holding with my own arm, and since I'm not quite strong enough, daddy's probably the best bet. <laughs> In this picture, it shows me using the stick and the PVC pipe holder so that you know how it looks like. The app that I use is called ProSat. ProSat tells when the satellite will come over my location. It also tells the azimuth. Azimuth is where to point the antenna from left to right. It also tells elevation. Elevation is how high to point the antenna into the sky. The azimuth and the elevation put together show the path that the satellite will take through the sky. With the information you get from your prediction app, Figure out the path that the satellite will take through the sky. It helps for this part to practice with landmarks, like you might know that it will be from that tree to way up to at the middle of the sky to over down there at that for a lease sign. Or maybe it will be anywhere between like that tree to way down at the bottom of the horizon two over to that other tree, or anywhere between that. You have to tune your radios to the correct frequency. You have to wait for the satellites to come over your um, location. I usually hear the satellite when it reaches about two degrees above the horizon. You have to follow the satellite across the sky with your antenna. And depending on the elevation of the pass, the pass can last from about 12 to 15 minutes. Doppler shift is having to change frequency. I have to change the Doppler shift when I can't hear the downlink clearly. It's kind of like a train. As it goes by, it makes an ear sound. Some don't understand it like that, but I do. <laughs> the satellite spins in space, so you have to twist the antenna for polarity. You have to wait your turn. I'm talking about FM because that's what I usually do. But because it's FM, you ho can only have one station talk at a time. You have to exchange your call sign and give your maidenhead grid score. There's so much going on, I usually feel like an octopus, or more that I need to be. This is a video showing how easy it is to work a satellite pass. Kilo Mike 4 India Papa Foxtrot EL99. Kilo Mike 4 India Papa Foxtrot EL99. QSL Echo Mary 7-0. QSL Echo Mary 7-0. I am located in the EL99. QSL? QSL, thanks so much. Have a good day. Kilo Mike 4 India Papa Foxtrot. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to work a satellite. What's really cool about talking on the satellites is that I get to talk to and meet a lot of people. I talk to UT1FG stroke Maritime Mobile. That means he's on a boat. His name is Yuri. We got to visit his ship, and only one other ham had ever visited his ship before. That picture is of me and my siblings going on to his ship. I've worked a lot of DX, like St. Lucia, Haiti, Mexico, Canada, Cayman Islands, and Texas. I hear they want to be the newest DXCC entity.
I also got a QSL card. I don't know where it is, but it's supposed to be here. Oh. <laughs> but it's from Curacao. I've talked to Curacao and also the Falcon Islands. There are only like four people that are ham radio operators there. I've done a lot of grid activations, like the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and the Wright Brothers Monument. W1HQ, KX9X. W1HQ is a really cool call that the ARRL uses. And what was really cool is he got my grid that day because he called me with that cool call and I was in a really rare grid, FM21 I think it was. One time I got up at, oh forget this part. What was even cooler about the Wright Brothers Monument is that it was actually National Parks on the Air Day. One time I got up at 3 a.m. to work UT1FG stroke Maritime Mobile for the second time, and I was the only one on the satellite. That picture is of me at the Wright Brothers Monument. I've heard an astronaut, but never talked to one, but I plan to sometime. I've copied slow scan television from the International Space Station. That picture on there is the same thing that we actually copied from it. I've worked W1AW, another cool call that the ARRL uses. Lots of AMSAT people know me. That's what my call sign is. Came for, I'm pretty famous. <laughs> Someday I'd like to work more linear birds and build my own satellite antennas, work more rare DX, and sometime even be the DX. Sometime I want to go on the youth DX adventure somewhere. I'm going to participate in the K1D field day. It's going to be an all kid operated set up and taken down by kids. That's what it is, K1D for kids. Be the voice of a future Fox satellite. Sometime I want to be the voice of a future Fox satellite that maybe it'll go up in a few years, maybe I'll never do it, but I want to sometime. One time I got up at 3 a.m. to work a satellite um, to, during field day last year, 2015, to work a satellite to get 100 bonus points for working it. However, that was the one daddy put it in the wrong uplink. Not trying that. But since I didn't get breakfast, you see me eating a Twinkie. Yum. Come watch a satellite pass. Later, I will be working SO50 at 12.16 today. The station will be located outside the main entrance to Ball Arena. If you want to see more satellite videos or videos about ham radio, you can go to hamradio.world himradio.world. Me and my family have made that to get ha new hams, kids, or even if you just want to know how to build an antenna or something. That's it for now, 73. I hope to talk to you through the birds. She even picks up after herself over here. <laughs> That's great. The whole Lee family is uh, certainly a model for the rest of us.